hi everybody welcome to live blogger in this video we will start designing this page right here where we are displaying the blog posts in a grid layout so here we can see the first post is displayed in this full width layout and then we have two posts displayed in a row and this is also responsive so if i decrease the width of the browser window here we can see that for tablet versions we have two posts displayed in a row and then if you go to the mobile version here we can see that we have just one post displayed in a row. Alright, so let's get started. Now in this video, we will just create the design using HTML and CSS. And in the next video, I'll show you how to update the content of these posts using JavaScript easily. So here I have created this uh, folder called blog posts and I just opened it with VS Code. And I also have this folder called images where we have these four images which we're going to use in our design. So let's go ahead and start by creating the necessary files. So let's create a new file called index.html. Let's create another file called style.css. And we'll also need a JavaScript file. I'll just name it main.js. So let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you can just press exclamation and press tab. And you will have this basic HTML5 code. Right, let's link our CSS file over here and uh, here in the body I'll just link the JavaScript file. And now let's start with the markup of our design. So the first thing we will do is uh, we'll create a container division for all the blog posts. So let's create a container division and let's give it a class of blog posts container. And in that for each of the blog posts I'll just create a division with a class of blog post. And in this, we will have the thumbnail first of all. So, for that, let's create a division and let's give it a class of thumbnail. And that we will have the image. And in the source, I'll just type images forward slash. And I'll just add the first image over here. And then we can see that we have all this content on the right side. And we'll add all of this content inside a separate division. So, let's go outside this thumbnail division and let's create a division with a class of text content. And in that, the first thing we need to have is the label. So let's create a division with a class of label. And let's add the label over here. So I'll just type master class. And then we need to have the title. So let's copy this title from here. And uh, let's create an S3 for the title. And let's give it a class of post title. Let's paste the title over here. And then we need to have the summary. So I'll just copy this uh, summary from here. And let's create a division with a class of summary. And I'll just paste the summary over here. And then lastly, we need to have this button for read more. So let's create an anchor tag for the button. And uh, here you can add the link of your post. I'll just add hash for now. And let's give it a class of read more button. And uh, in here, I'll just type read more. All right now, let's go ahead and copy this blog post uh, three more times. So Let's copy this blog post division from here and let's paste it three more times over here. Right now, let's start styling this. So, first of all, let's open this in the browser and let's see how it looks. So, I have this extension called Live Server installed in VS Code. So, once you install that, you can just right click over here in the HTML file and click on Open with Live Server. And now we can see that the design is being displayed over here. Right now, let's go to our CSS file and let's start styling this. So first of all, let's target the container division, which is blog post container. So let's type blog post container. Let's set a max width and let's set it to 800 pixels. And let's also bring it to the center. So I'll just type margin zero, top and bottom and auto for left and right. And uh, let's also set the display to grid. And now we need to have two items in a row. So Let's type grid template columns. And uh, here you need to type 1fr, 1fr, which means there will be two columns with the same width. So now if you go back, here we can see that we have two of these posts displayed side by side. Right now let's also set the font. So we'll set the font to Rubik. So let's get the font link from Google Fonts. All right, so here I'm in fonts.google.com and uh, let's search for Rubik. And let's select this font and uh, we need to have the bold version and also the regular one. So 
let's select regular 400 and uh, let's also select the bold version which is uh, i think semi bold 600 so let's select this and uh, let's go ahead and copy the link from here or you can also copy the link of the css so i'll just go to import and let's copy this from here and let's add this to our css so i'll just paste it at the beginning and now let's go ahead and uh, set the font so I'll just a font family and uh, let's set it to rubik sans serif we'll also add a gap between these elements so we'll set a gap of 32 pixels between the blog post divisions right now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to set the width and the height of this image so for that let's go ahead and target that i'll just tap blog post container and uh, let's tap img and uh, let's set the width of the image to 100 percent of the parent and now we can see we have the correct width for the image let's also set a specific height so i'll just tap height and let's set it to 220 pixels and we'll also set object fit to cover so that it has the correct aspect ratio and let me just quickly go ahead and change the images so that we can have some variations so i'll just set this to 2.jpg and this to 3.jpg and this one to 4.jpg right now let's go ahead and style these blog post divisions so here we can see we have these divisions with the class of blog post so let's type blog post container blog post and uh, we will set the border radius to 16 pixels so that it has rounded corners and now we can see that the rounded corners are not added to these images that's because uh, for the image we don't have the rounded corners so for that you have to type overflow of hidden to the container division and now we can see we have the rounded corners right now let's go ahead and add some box shadow so i'll just have box shadow and uh, let's set the values to 0 6 pixels 30 pixels negative 8 pixels rgba 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.3. And now we can see we have this box shadow. Right now, let's add some padding to this text content. So here we can see we have this division with a class of text content. So here let's type blog post container text content. And let's set a padding of 16 pixels. Right now, let's style these labels. So for the labels we have this division with a class of label so let's start blog post container label and uh, let's set the font size to 13 pixels and uh, let's set the text transform to uppercase and we'll set the font weight to bold and uh, let's also set the color of the text to 4c5 bff Right now let's style these titles so for the title we have this uh, s3 with a class of post title so let's type blog post container s3 dot post title and uh, let's set the font size to 20 pixels and we'll set the margin to 16 pixels top and bottom and zero for left and right right now let's style this summary so for the summary we have this division with a class of summary so here let's type blog post container summary and uh, let's set the line height to 1.8 and let's set the font size to 15 pixels right now let's style this read more button so for the read more button we have this anchor tag with a class of read more btn so let's type blog post container read more btn and uh, let's set the text transform to uppercase and uh, we'll set the font size to 13 pixels and let's also remove the underlines so for that you have to type text decoration none and let's set the color of the text to black and uh, let's add some margin so i'll just type margin 8 pixels top and bottom and uh, 0 for left and right and we can see that the margins are not being added that's because anchor tags are inline elements by default so we need to change it into display of inline block and now we can see that the margins are being added 
So if I just add it to a higher value, we can see that the margins are being added. So now let's go ahead and add a background color. So I just tap background. And uh, let's set the color to ECEDFA. And let's also add some padding. So let's set the padding to 4 pixels top and bottom and 8 pixels left and right. And let's also add rounded corners. So I'll just tap border radius and let's set it to 10 pixels. All right now, let's add a hover effect. So if you go back to the original design, we can see that when we hover over this, we have a different background color. So let's tap blog post container, read more button, colon hover. And let's set the background color to B4, B9, FF. And let's also add smooth transition. So here let's tap transition and let's set it to all 400 milliseconds ease. And now we have this smooth transition. Now we need to bring this button to the right side. So for that, let's go ahead and uh, change the container division to a flex, which is text content. So here we can see we have text content. So I'll just set the display to flex. And we'll also set the flex direction to column. So let's have flex direction column. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, align this button to the right side. So here for the read more button, let's type align self flex end. And now we can see that the button is on the right side. All right, so that's basically it with the cards at the bottom. Now let's go ahead and style this first card over here. So for the first one, we need to have full width, which spans the two columns. So for that, let's go ahead and target the first blog post division. So just a blog post container, blog post, colon first child. So this will select the first instance of blog post and for the first one we need to type grid column and we need to set it to one by three which will span two columns so it will start from the first column and uh, go till the start of the third column so now we can see that the first post has this uh, full width which spans two columns and now we need to bring this uh, thumbnail to the left side and the text content on the right side so let's go ahead and uh, set a display of flex and now we can see that it looks all right we'll also bring everything to the center vertically so i'll just type align items to the center right now let's increase the width of this image a little bit so let's type blog post container blog post first child img and let's set the width to 240 pixels and now we can see at the bottom we have a little bit of space. So for that you can just set the display to flex. And now we can see it is fixed. Right now let's quickly go ahead and make this responsive. So here we can see we have two breakpoints. For the first one we have this design where we have two items in a row. So for that let's go ahead and add a media query. So I'll just tap at media. And we'll set the max width to 700 pixels. So whenever the width of the screen is less than 700 pixels, all the CSS we have inside this block will be added to our page. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to select this first child. So let's copy this uh, selector from here and I'll just paste it over here. And here we need to set grid column and we need to set it back to one. And now we need to set the flex direction to column. So I'll just have flex direction column. And uh, let's also reset the width of the image. So I'll just go ahead and copy this code from here. And let's paste it over here. And I'll just change the width of the image to 100%. And now we can see it looks all right. But for the image, uh, we don't have the correct width. So that's because uh, we have set the align items to center over here. So here we need to change it to normal. So let's tap align items, normal. And now we can see it has the correct width. Now we'll also reduce the gap between these elements. So for that, let's target the blog post container. So I'll just tap blog post container. And let's set the gap to 16 pixels. Right now, lastly, we need to have one more breakpoint for the smartphone version. So 
this is how it looks we need to have one item in a row so for that let's go ahead and add a new media query so i'll just tap at media and let's set the max width to 600 pixels and uh, here we need to set just one item in a row so here we can see that we have set grid template columns to 1fr 1fr so we need to copy this and here let's type blog post container and here instead of 1fr 1fr we need to just type 1fr and now we can see it looks all right so with that we have completed designing this uh, blog post page using html and css now in the next video i'll show you how to update the content of this design easily using javascript all right so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day Thank <laughs> you.